Hi, my name is Kyle Mackey, Business Development Engineer for Navistar Next eMobility. Today we're here to talk about charging and what that looks like. Here at Navistar Next eMobility Solutions, we have a dedicated team to help with your site planning and engineering, creating complete EV charging kits for both AC and DC charger installations, EV charging equipment certification with our vehicles, as well as guaranteed uptime for EV infrastructure. Here at Navistar Next, we are here for all of your charging needs. Infrastructure is a key part to the charging process. The first thing we want to understand is how much power do we have coming into the building? How much is available for the charging itself? We also want to understand our short and long-term goals for our electric vehicles. What do our daily routes look like? What's the charging cycle going to look like? We can help with all that. If there are any infrastructure upgrades, uh, please keep in mind it could take up to 6 to 12 months to get these completed. Once again, here at Navistar Next eMobility, we're here to help you with that process. The first step in the charging infrastructure process is to access the QR code. The QR code will take you to an online survey of 15 to 20 questions. Once the survey is completed, we will gather all your data and schedule an on-site assessment. Once all of our data is collected and reviewed, we will create a custom engineering plan tailored to your fleet and your site. Now let's talk about chargers. Today there are currently three different levels of chargers available. The one in front of us here is a level one bag charger. This charger will typically come in the back seat of your passenger electric vehicles today. This charger will plug into our vehicle, but unfortunately we do not recommend it because it will take a really long time to charge. The charger behind me is a level two, 19.2 kilowatt AC charger. The charge port handle is a 1772 SAE standard connection. This is the same connection our vehicles are using. We chose this for several reasons. One, we understand our commercial customer is probably gonna have other electric vehicles in their fleet. Also, if a driver is on his route and was able to grab lunch and plug in at a public charging station, this would allow him to do that. All of our recommended chargers will be network capable. This will allow us to send updates to the charger over the air, help diagnose charging issues, as well as allow the fleet manager to check in on their charging status. This is the recommended minimum charger for all overnight charging. Finally, we're going to talk about DC charging. On top of being more efficient and faster charging than AC, DC gives you a couple other options as well. For example, using the combo CCS1 adapter port that comes standard in our vehicles today, we can use vehicle to grid options as well as vehicle to building. This combo port allows AC communication and charging as well as the DC connection to give you both AC and DC charging options. As previously mentioned, all of our chargers are network capable. With that, we can initiate different charge times for a couple of reasons. This will help with the load on the grid, as well as get us down to that lower negotiated price for charging costs. 